All right, so here we are, another test of the thermal imaging system. I'm walking outside right now to give you a little bit of perspective. Last time we checked, um, you can see me, I'm waving at you right now. I'm approximately 45 feet away from the camera. And my brother, who's all the way back at the other end of the garage, uh, across the street from ours, he's waving now. He's about 81 feet away. Um, the one change we made with this system tonight is we not only, as you saw in the last video, added the, thir the front germanium lens, um, but we also connected the heater. Um, the one thing that we've noticed about the heater in this is that, number one, it heats up pretty quickly, so I guess it would take care of sludge and debris and everything. But um, the other nice thing is it, it looks like there's a lot of detail that's being presented that wasn't otherwise on the other videos. Now, I don't know if it's because the camera is set up so that it views uh, with that heated element in the front um, or whatever. I mean, I noticed that we're not getting the garage back there in detail, but you can see the image of the the two cars plus the one up front, so it, the picture looks kind of weird in what it's supposed to be, but again, I'm completely and thoroughly happy with this this system. It seems like it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Now right now, like I said, we have this set up the way we used to. Um, this is the 26 inch garage uh, screen that we've been testing it on, and the camera's mounted up high. Uh, we did some testing outside. Uh, on or in a vehicle, but not driving, uh, and that's actually the next step that we're going to try and and uh, undertake here with, say, the smaller screens. Uh, we're still playing around. I wanted to see what the heating element did in this thing, and we had the opportunity to put it together, so we decided to do that tonight. Um, I'm a little curious as to why we're not seeing the garage back there, but um, it might just be because the garage is warmer than whatever, because we had the door closed, or I don't know. So I think we're going to do a couple other tests and we'll keep filming and we'll see what we can come up with. So we're back in here in uh, part five and we've disassembled the back plate of the camera to oil the motor and see what's going on with it. Um, it looks like there's a drive gear that rotates an assembly here but we can't find any power connections to it. But then we've got this whole setup. You can see in here there's a it appears to be a small screen or a digitizer of some type. And then I guess this is the chopper disc. And it's odd because we found that mine, as you can see here, has a tear in it. I don't know how that would ever happen, but it does have a tear in it. So aside from oiling this thing, there's nothing more that we can do. It's possible that that tear is causing the fuzzy imaging problem, especially if that thing spins at a large enough rotation since that's not complete and whole, that it's causing some fuzziness or whatever. Well, I'm just going to have to deal with it and, you know, potentially source another camera. But just to let people know, four screws you have to take out if you get one of these are right here. They're up front, through the front of this piece. There's four screws. There's one there. There's one in this corner. There's one in this corner. And then to remove the whole assembly, if we look on the back here, there's a bolt hole. And that bolt here has a seal on it. Make sure you get your rubber seal around the outside edge, and then you can reassemble it. But it looks like a dollop of oil right here on this piece is all that's needed to keep this thing happy. So we're going to oil it and reassemble it and see what we can do. So we just finished uh, doing the install. Um, we oiled up the chopper disc motor and a few other things. and um, We're not 100% sure uh, if it made a big difference. You can still hear that there's a, there's a noticeable difference in the no or the noises I wouldn't say is necessarily noticeable, but uh, it's still making a little bit of noise. Uh, we had to take the camera down, so when we remounted it, it's looking, it's pointing down a little lower. Your head's chopped off. It's pointing down. So, but you can see that there is detail in the cars. You can see the person walking. Uh, frame rate's still good, um, but it does look like the resolution got a little bit better. The, the, the sad part about this is, without seeing it in person, you're getting artifacts from the screen. Um, the way the camera's picking up the screen, um, I mean, I can show you both sources here. We've got a camcorder, and now I've got an iPhone looking at this, this image from two different angles. I mean, you're just getting screen artifacts from refresh rates and things of that nature. Um, not much we can do about it. Um, 
but it is what it is. So we're going to keep chugging along and see what we can come up with here in a little bit. That'll mess with your mind. That's me viewing the screen on the camera, viewing the screen on there. <laughs> But yeah, we're going to keep looking and we're going to try and do an on-the-road test. Mount this on the front of a car, use the display inside and see what we can uh, make happen with it. So, take it easy and until next time.